Yo, it's Grand Bias, your boy Tex, back on some Mad Ultimate Team 16 with some more Mutt gameplay. This gameplay is from when I was doing my Roadmaster grinding for Tom Brady. And I got a lot of this gameplay stocked up, which means you'll be getting this stuff in discussion videos like this. So I mentioned earlier that I was going to be doing a top five of my personal choices for golden tickets uh unfortunately i did not pull a golden ticket and the list that came out for the unofficial golden tickets looks pretty nice frank gore jarvis landry demarcus ware drc kendricks wilson calvin ap johnny menzel michael vick emmett smith ricky or roy williams one of those two it's roy williams like ain't no ricky ain't no ricky in this game right now Wes welker richard sherman eric barry romo and another dick lane based off his easter so that's the unofficial list and i can't really fault these guys a lot of these guys either want a bunch of coins or make their favorite players and if i did get a chance to pull a golden ticket i would be more inclined to make one of my favorite players hence the title of the video my top five golden ticket choices now, you guys may not agree with my choices. If you guys don't agree with my choices, don't yell at me down in the comment section because a lot of the choices I'm going to name may be players that you guys want and players that I do, so don't get mad at me. Just go ahead and leave down in the comment section below what five GT or what, what, what five players you guys would create if you guys were lucky to pull a golden ticket. So let's go ahead and get it started with number five. And fortunately, this guy probably wouldn't got created because EA did the right thing. And... It was going to be Marquette King for the longest time. I have had a weird relationship with this Marquette King. Back in 2014, EA dropped the final edition Marquette King. And for some reason, they just didn't realize he was fast. And that's why I came up with a thing called the dartboard theory. They just give cards random stuff without actually looking at what they're actually good at. So Marquette King, fastest punter in the NFL, actually not the fastest, second fastest in the NFL. Uh, one of the only black punters played receiver in college. So he has some, he has some speed behind him. Some speed behind him. They dropped this card back in 2014, the final edition when it first came out, and they gave him like 60 speed, something like that. And because of that, I decided to go ahead and campaign for this guy to get 90 speed. And with the support of you guys, my subscribers, as well as my Twitter followers, we got his speed changed to like 80 something. It was it was a nice upgrade from a six to an 80. It's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, but it's just attention to detail that makes sense. A company that makes a lot of money putting out games, they need to pay attention to the small details because it shows that they care about the game they're putting out. It is kind of annoying to see them just do things completely different when how players play in real life, which lets you know that these guys really aren't watching football. They're pretty much just making it up as they go along. And if they actually were to pay attention, they can give guys more attributes that make a lot of sense and more people will complain less simple as that. But a lot of these guys don't pay attention down there at EA as much as that we would like them to. And because of that, we get all the negative stuff over on the Twitter after something drops. So Market King came out with low speed. We campaign, got his speed changed. And I kept saying ever since then, if I pull the golden ticket, I make a Market King. Now the community would be pissed at that. And that's why he's five on my list. Like he'd be the fifth person I would choose simply because we wouldn't expect a punter. Plus, it will give us an opportunity to see if kick power actually matters in this game. I want to see if he can get 102 kick power, if that's actually going to result in him kicking the ball out of the end zone. If not, we know over 100 stats in this game or over 100 attributes in this game don't actually matter. And if that's the case, why do they keep dropping cards with 101 hit power if over 100 attributes in this game don't actually matter? So that is number five on my list. Number four on my list is a tie between two players. Two of my favorite mud halfbacks of all time. Back in 25 and back in Madden 15, it was Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush was amazing. Now this year, my man crush goes to Jarek McKinnon. Those are my two favorite ultimate team halfbacks of all time. Like those two guys are just spectacular. So it depends on how I'm feeling that day, but Reggie Bush this year is not that good as compared to what he was in the past years, especially with looseness not being as important. But Jarek McKinnon, man, his gold card set the standard for all halfbacks in this game. Every single league card that dropped in this game, I would always compare to McKinnon, and a few compared pretty well, but then you look at the price. Jarek McKinnon is going for 1.5 thousand coins. And then there's 92 overall Lamar Miller's 300K. Like, what? what is going on here? I said 300K. I meant to say 300K. Uh, uh, whatever. Anyway, you guys get my point. Jerk McKinnon has been and probably will be the best hat back in this game for his price. And so it'd be nice to see him get an upgrade. He kind of got shafted this past season. He had, I think, one good game and didn't get an upgrade card. Because I think if EA did get Jerk McKinnon a card, it would break. Like, oh, my God, yo. It would be ridiculous, man. Like, a elite or an 80 
plus overall mechanic card will probably have at least 95 speed better pass but a card will probably be on everybody's team and they couldn't do it so they shafted him so Four on my list is a tie between McKinnon and Reggie Bush, with me more so leaning towards McKinnon because he plays extremely well this year, and Reggie Bush has kind of had a litany of just bad cards, just a litany of bad cards. So those are the four on my list, and now number three as this Marshall Falk. Come on, man. Come on, man. This is what we doing right now, breaking all these tackles. Number three on my list would be a better, accurate Cam Newton. Cam Newton gets some amazing cars in this game every single year. Good speed, good trucking, good all that nonsense, but he just can't throw the damn ball. I used to use the 93 overall Turkey Thanksgiving, which would have been a 96 if that guy did score three TDs on Thanksgiving. He did not, and his accuracy is so bad, man. Using good quarterbacks like Steve Young, Jameis Winston, guys with great accuracy, Tony Romo, guys that can get the ball down the field with ease, it's, it's such a big difference. Cam stayed missing guys deep, and while having a faster Cam is cool with the way guys play this year with the pursuit angles and not being able to outrun anybody unless you have really really good speed and acceleration speed is not gonna do it's not it's nice to have but it's not gonna help you win games man michael vick is amazing the ball's michael vick but when he's in the pocket he's slow outside of the pocket he's a beast and you want to have a guy that has great accuracy so a much improved cam do with better throwing deep better throwing short would probably be the best quarterback in this game simply because he can do it all He's as big as Peyton Manning, as accurate as Peyton Manning, but faster. That's all we need, and that's what I would choose as a quarterback. Now, he's third on my list. Reason he's number three? Simple because I don't really think that we're in need of a quarterback like that, especially now that they patched all the ebook stuff. He was really useful when they were doing all that fucking nonsense, Mike Scrape blitzing stuff, all that savage at you. But now that it's stuff out of the game, you pretty much stand back in the pocket for the ball. So even though a much accurate cam would be kind of nice to have, you can get by using Steve Young, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, guys like that. will be a that'll be a much lesser price tag. So that is why he's number three. And number two on my list is gonna be somebody on the defense who also played for the Panthers. I'm sorry if I'm being a homer, but bruh, this is a throwback to Madden. 15. Bruh, there was a card in that game that was probably the best user card in the game as well as being the best defensive end slash hybrid outside linebacker in the game. And that was the Julius Pepper. So me and Vic figured out the way to use him properly. In Madden 25, the best defense to run was a 3-4. 4-3 really wasn't that good as it is in this game, but back then it was a 3-4 defense, which was one of the run. Now, Julius Peppers was not ideal for a 3-4 defensive end. I mean, he's big, but he also had, didn't have the highest block shit. He had good speed, good finesse, good, good power move, but the block shit wasn't that high. But what he did have above all else was the ability to play that left outside linebacker or right outside linebacker. Because of that, in the 3-4, he just destroyed tackles. And then when it's third and long, your opponent has to pass the ball he was the perfect guy to drop back into coverage, man. He played his zone extremely well, just so well. And on top of him playing it so well, he had good speed, he had good hands. And if you really wanted to use him, you could. If you really wanted him to play those glitchy out routes, you could play it so shallow, man. That's the greatest thing about using guys that are tall in this game. Height doesn't really matter that much when it comes to influencing how guys uh, catch passes on, aggressive catches, all that. It, it matters more when it comes to using guys on defense because it allows you more margin for error. You can pretty much play so shallow underneath the route, and as long as your guy jumps up, you may make a play in the ball and get a pick. So he was so fun to use and he was just so fun to see him go against the left tackle or the right tackle by himself and just completely destroy the guy, force a sack in the backfield. He was ideal. And this year, Julius Peppers, oh my God, he's trash. Like his best card, I think he has like 85 speed. It's not fast at all, man. That's not really that great. And on top of that, he's not really good at anything. Like his gold card dropped in the game, like they nerfed him completely, man. Just like they're going to nerf Anthony Barr next year. You could book that. His elite card last year was so much better than his elite card is this year and i would like to make a golden chicken julius peppers at right in so he has the updated version from his flashback card it's like a 99 overall and then that guy can be played a left outside linebacker and if you really are savage with it you can either sub that guy in the linebacker in the game or you can put him down at the defensive line if you want him to play that position so the ideal 
use your linebacker with good speed, block shit, power move, finesse move is Julius Peppers. And I'm hoping that somebody wises up and makes one this year because he'd be so fucking amazing. And for those that are saying Texas, we have Anthony Barr in the game. I know we have Anthony Barr. He's amazing. Just imagine a juice Julius Peppers and a Barr on the same field. Bro, you're not losing any games. Like, you're not going to give up any touchdowns. Flat routes are going to be covered as well as the pass rush is going to be vicious. So, just think of Peppers, man. And hopefully next year his card is much better. That card is a mutt legend. Like, I mean, like, he's, like if he got a boss card... I wouldn't be mad. Like, I'm more mad that Camardi got a boss card. Camardi's not a Hall of Famer, whereas Peppers is probably going to be a Hall of Famer. So if you got a, a boss 24-hour card, we'll be mad at that whatsoever. And now there was one. And this golden ticket would be the one I would create over everything else if I was afforded to. Now, because I am not a big believer in golden ticket offensive linemen or defensive tackles and safeties and all that I, I i like guys that you can either see an impact with like quarterbacks halfbacks guys you can actually play with because what's the point of getting somebody that expensive just so he could play by himself i want to use that guy so those guys aren't who i would want but looking at this guy right now i think he would be the best card in this game now unfortunately he's out of position so I don't think EA is giving us an opportunity to create out of position golden tickets this year, but cornerback Ronnie Lott, if he got a golden ticket, he would be the best cornerback in this game. I mean, look at this dude's attributes. He is ridiculous. Hot block shit, good speed, good man, good zone. And the block shit is more important above everything else. Everybody in this game runs inside zone. It got to the point where I ended up putting strong safety Jason Taylor at my nickel just so he can get block shed and get the hat back in the backfield. Like, it's been insane. And then you got the guys out of here that will put Ben Hartstock, Lee Smith, uh, Vance McDonald, all these guys in at receiver just to pancake your defensive backs. Now, while that is a sound strategy, there just is not that many cornerbacks in this game with the hot block shed. That is why I love Logan Ryan. That is why I love playing base defenses for that specific reason so i can have linebackers out there against those guys but because it's a mismatch that your opponent can get you in it is something that i don't want to test so that's why i'd rather have a guy that has the coverage ability in a ronnie lot at cornerback and also has the block shit like a defensive end out there to set the edge and that would be my number one overall golden ticket it's not the sexiest pick but it probably be the most practical mutt pick because that guy is not a user guy but he's also a guy that can make an impact immediately he'll still get moss but as long as you stop the run you probably shouldn't lose the game because running the ball especially if you're down by three down by down by six and you need to stop having guys with no block shed you're gonna get pancake like it's going to happen and he should not get pancake with just a little bit higher block shed as well as higher finesse move all that stuff that actually matters now there's some other guys that'd be kind of cool to make von miller uh but he already has an od card so i don't see the point of making another von miller just so he has 99s in a few spots that's not really going to be worth an upgrade but yeah there's a ton of cards that i could basically list as honorable mentions but those are my five as i said at the beginning of the video hope you guys don't destroy my five choices instead leave your five choices down in the comment section below if you guys agree with my list let me know if you guys agree if you guys don't explain it but also explain it in a way where you're not going to get blocked a lot of you guys are mean out there man i say market can you guys might yell at me i remember i remember at the beginning of last year's mad i tweeted at ea wondering if kickers and punters were going to be gold players in your packs i was one of i heard a rumor that they weren't going to be uh the gold card in your pack anymore they're just going to be uh upgrade from the silver or bronze and i tweeted that then they responded and everybody got mad at me i was so confused so don't be mean to me because i might cry i might cry but hopefully y'all enjoyed this video i'm the texas boy i may drop the top five most expensive golden tickets to create if you guys did pull a golden ticket because Based off how the Madden market is looking right now, you could probably make an easy 4 million coins if you guys did pull the golden ticket based off of upgrading the boss cards in the game. But, yep, that's all I got for you guys. I'm the Texas Boy, it's a long video, so thumbs it up, share it with your friends, and I'll catch y'all mother bleepers in the next one. Peace.